way to do it than just dive in, I guess. Okay, welcome to a, another Donkey Kong Genius video. And in this video, um, we're going to look at the RNG manipulation route for Dragon Warrior. Um, since the last Awesome Games Done Quick, where Nest Cardinality did a manipulation run of this game, I'm pretty sure there's been interest in exactly how this manipulation takes place and have a route that they could potentially use. So before I begin, I first have to give credit both to Nest Cardinality and to Oijiwi. Uh, early on, when I decided I first wanted to play this game, Oijiwi decided to share the notes that he had for a route that he had not even run yet to, to help me get acclimated with utilizing notes and just being able to understand the game and uh, learn as I experience it. And at first it seemed very daunting, but once I got the hang of it, it wasn't as difficult as I had first envisioned that it would be. Uh, based on the notes that he had shared, I, of the five different splits that we will be talking about in this game, uh, credit will go to his to the second split of the game, where um, the notes and the, the where you stop and uh, the manner of fighting the goldman is going to uh, be taken directly from him. I did make uh, one slight adjustment on his goldman fight, but split number two, when we talk about it, it's pretty much uh, his, uh, his route. The rest of the game is taken directly from Nes Cardinality. I watched every single run that he has done, even the obsolete ones that he had submitted to speedrun.com in order to uh, find all the backups uh, throughout the entire game. And I now have, uh, which I'm sharing not only uh, in the description link to a pastebin, um, but I'm sharing this information so that you two can use the same route, you can use the same notes. And so that's what I'm going to be doing this evening is I'm going to be going over how to read the notes, how to understand that, but also so you can mimic some of the things that I show. And uh, also to keep in mind that this particular route, uh, uh, the first, third, and fourth splits, are taken directly from Nest Cardinality. The fourth split uh, in his route, uh, in the route that we're going to be looking at, does not have any manipulation that we will be doing for the fourth split. So that's kind of a freebie. Anybody could execute that. It's pretty easy to do. All right, so we're going to start at the very beginning, uh, which is to look at uh, getting out of the throne room and doing our first route to our first location. Now, you'll see in the notes below that I actually have uh, where it says first tree, hilltop, last hill, bridge, and two in parentheses. That means we're doing a delay for two. Um, uh, you'll see that I kind of named each of the stops, but to be quite honest, after I documented that stuff, and that may be helpful, uh, having a visual of what it looks like is going to be so much more helpful than trying to remember what tree corner means. Uh, but if you look at the 4 plus 9 in, in this game, and I'll go ahead and uh, show you exactly what that means since it's in our first bit of notes. When you walk and you come to a stop, you'll see that the text comes up after uh, four walking animations. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, so after four little walking animations, uh, this text box is going to come up. So what I've done, instead of counting... Because there's a delay, there's a slight delay in your animation. So there's one, two, three, four, slight delay, and then he starts walking again. So what I decided to do with my notes is the four plus nine basically means we're going to do a nine count after we see the text box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and go. All right, same thing with the, uh, you'll see a, a four and 16 there next to wait. Um, that's what that means. The four is just waiting for the text box. 
and then the number afterward is what we're counting after the text box. That's how I decided to do it. It's less counting. It just feels a lot easier for me to do. Okay. All right, so the, the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a new game. And for the manipulation route, we're going to be using exclamation point. In this game, depending on what name you choose, it will uh, allow you to grow faster in certain attributes. So the attributes that uh, we want to grow is going to be our strength and our HP, I believe. And so using the exclamation point, it's going to be what we're going to be going for. And we're going to want to do the fast text because we don't want to wait for slower text. It doesn't make any sense. And since we're talking about text, there are two different releases of this game. There's the PRG0 and the PRG1. There is a difference. The PRG0 is going to save you frames. The reason being is that when you get hit by an enemy, and you will get hit a couple times in this route, in the non-manipulation route, it's going to be even more important. It's more relevant, I should say, because every single time you get hit, with the PRG zero, it's gonna say, thy hits, as opposed to thy hit points. And so because it's scrolling only through thy hits instead of thy hit points, every single time you get hit, you're actually saving frames by using the PRG zero version of the game. So if you see thy hits, but you may notice the Nest Carnality uses the PRG one, uh, because uh, it was the version of the game that most people probably had access to, and more of those were actually distributed at the time uh, and it seems to be the version of the game that people play the most that um, don't be concerned that yours says thy hits and his says uh, thy hit points so once again i'm using prg zero because for speed running i'm using every legit means i could possibly get my hands on in order to save frames so we're going to choose fast because that's legit so if you're not familiar uh, with this game at all when you go through doors and grab uh, treasure chests you need to actually menu to them you need to grab all three of these for this route because the RNG in this game is manipulated by items that have been written to and removed from your inventory so we do have to grab those. So we have everything in here. And we're going to talk to them because we want to save it. Okay. And once you've saved it and you heard that little click, you can go ahead and hit reset. Now keep in mind your timer is actually going at this point. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to continue. And what we're going to want to do is uh, hold A. A is going to enable us to buffer through the text box. So the very first thing that we're going to do now is, because we saved and reset it, we're going to do this um, at least four times in the game where we need to exit out of this the king's room here on one of two frames. So that means you have a two frame window to clear this text box. Unfortunately, there's no way to um, buffer. You just have to get used to clearing the text box. So you'll see, um, uh, for the slime marathon, I call it. Now this is the very first split. You'll see a UD slash SD. What that means is, is that this guard right here is going to do uh, one of two movements. And the movements that we want to see him do is either up, down, or stay where he is, go down. If he does one of those two things, we might as well continue on all right, and this is actually going to be the third or fourth frame uh, and s instead of the first available frame of clearing the text box, we're actually doing the third and the fourth, okay? And when we come out, this girl right here, her movement, we're watching that as well. If she goes down, left, right, that means we have gotten one of those two frames. And that, that's when we know that we're on a very specific frame. The reason why this is important because when you walk, every tile you walk is actually changing the RNG one RNG slot. 
so to speak. So if you wait for one spot, you're actually cycling it forward as if you had walked, I, I think it's, I don't remember specifically, I think it's 12 or 15 or 16, um, which is why the delays are important because it enables us to jump that many slots ahead so we can skip the encounter that's actually occurring uh, within that period of time. All right, so uh, we want it so that we're constantly walking uh, so the RNG is stepping one slot every single frame. All right, this is how we can control where we're at. And since when we stop for one, every time we do that, it's jumping ahead a very specific amount of uh, RNG slots. So once again, we're still in control of what frame we're on when we nail our first encounter. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do this just to give you an idea what, what it looks like. Up, down, stay down. All right, we missed it, so you gotta reset. And you will reset every single time it fails. No matter how many times it takes, if you try to clear the text box one frame too soon or more, it will not clear. He went stay down. Now we're gonna watch her movement down, left, right. So now we are in one of two frames. So we are on the first split, which means we're gonna stop on the first tree. We're gonna do some hill action here. One, two. And that means two on the bridge. One, two. which means second tree. And stop here. 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 We got two here. One, two. One, two, three. One, one. Here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and go. And we have reached our first middle slime. All right. So I'm gonna stop right there because we're gonna uh, now talk about the fight mechanics. Now, um, on our walk here, you notice that I delayed sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three. You'll get a feel for how long that takes and you'll also uh, get good at being able to identify his steps. All right, that's going to be important for you to know because there's some helpful cues when we finally get into the dark where all you can see is your character. All right, um, so as you can see, like the first tree, hilltop, last hill, all of that stuff, I don't even use that anymore just because I have all, all the points of where you stop memorized. All right, uh, because I have those memorized, the notes don't even help me anymore. But what is going to help you is um, the uh, you can come up with rhyming. I, I, I found that rhyming was very helpful to me. So in the case of the path to the slimes, for instance, and also I'm going to make uh, all of these uh, SRM files available. Okay, so everything in the castle to the Dragon Lord fight to every single part of the map in the dark. If you have a an EverDrive, all of these is going to be, all of these will be available to you. So we're going to look at the uh, first split here, Path to the Slimes, and um, you'll want to practice each of these particulars. But you know this is the first split, which means we're going to stop on the first tree. We do some hill action. which means two on the bridge, one, two, which means we stop at tree number two and just do whatever you can to remember all the stop points. So with that, we'll go to the fight mechanics with the first slime. We'll go ahead and uh, scroll this up here.
We're just going to look at slime number one to start with because we have four slimes that we have to get. So we just entered into the first slime fight and um, we'll go through each of them but the main goal is to get acquainted to the notes. Uh, you can change the notes however you want, whatever is going to be easiest for you, but I'm showing you how what you're seeing on the screen is going to correlate to the notes so that you may be able to work from the notes to executing it and utilizing it for your own runs. All right, so anytime you do a save state, uh, right before a fight or you utilize one of these save states that I have, is that... Um, if you need to do something right away, you need to buffer in your inputs. Now, this game is going to be all about buffering. All right, so there's two types of buffering in the fight that you need to be able to do. Now, in the notes, you'll notice this next to slide number one, it says B5, attack zero. What that means is, is that we're going to use the B. One, two, three, four, five and we're gonna attack immediately. So we can buffer in the A, and we end up getting the RNG to be, we, get, we, get the, we got the frame and the RNG to get the excellent move so we can, we can kill him. So that's what the B means. That means we're, we're holding B, we're causing the command, 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 and this is causing, I think it's, uh, I think it's 16 frames or something like that that ends up um, advancing so we can nail him on a very specific frame but when you see attack plus zero that means we're just going to go ahead and we're going to attack him um, so that's the first the command is the first type of manipulation the second is called arrow manipulation which was discovered by Oijui where if you're holding a directional in a on the in the fight in the command menu and the, while you're holding let's say up and you press B everything is buffered the execution is going to be buffered meaning that when you press up the game first tries to actually move the arrow and because it can't it's not going to execute until it begins to do that again, which is a certain amount of frames. So everything's going to be buffered. So as, for example, you can see the blinking light, for example, the blinking arrow, that that arrow will be there for a certain amount of frames, then it's not there for a certain amount of frames. So if you didn't use the arrow manipulation, you will get whatever frame you hit Aeon. But you'll notice that the... Um, uh, for the second slime, it says attack plus two. Right? That is going to um, be one, two, the arrow. And we're watching the arrow, okay? Uh, the full numbers are going to be on the arrow, and the um, half numbers are going to be uh, in between where we're executing when the arrow is not there. Uh, but we don't have to worry about it on this one because we're just buffering. But when I'm doing these commands, or you're doing any kind of movement, we are actually holding, uh, in this case, either left or up, or if I, or if I uh, went in for a spell or an item, um, anytime uh, just before I hit A to select it, I'm actually pressing in a direction in the menu that the arrow cannot move to. So that if you're doing this, it will execute on a very specific frame. All right, so for our first slime, uh, we'll enter into the, the fight, we can just hold B. You can count out the commands. Also, when it says B times five, it's not involved, including the very first command. When you enter a fight, there's a command that's already there. It's gonna make a little noise like this. All right, I don't count that command at all. I, I let the game do what the game does the manipulation on it see that command that first command is automatic that's not part of my manipulation i don't care about it all right but what i do care about is what i'm going to have to execute so in this case we're going to do b times five one two three four five and i'm i'm still holding up a buffer in a 
A executes in a very specific frame, and because it's attack zero, 0, and we're good. All right, so that covers arrow manipulation. It's just something that you'll need to practice. And because you have what needs to be executed uh, in the notes, you'll get a feel for how the two correlate and how that's going to work. Uh, we'll look at um, the uh, run plus one and attack plus two and stuff like that uh, when those pop up. But the next thing is, is on L3, what the heck's on L3? Well, once you kill the fight, one, two, three, four, five. L is the long tone. So I'm holding A right now, okay? Because we, we want to make sure we get through this. One, two, three. You hear that long, do you hear that long tone? As soon as that tone hits, I go one and I'm listening to the do 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, um, that's what I'm listening to. So as soon as that long tone hits, I count one and then I, 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 I wait and I count one, two, three, go. All right, so in this case, one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna continue holding A because we wanna make sure that we can, if I didn't, these text box would delay. One, two, three. In this case, uh, you'll see that we got a Magi Waver. And uh, this brings us to our next learning point. In this game, Every other frame of clearing a text box after a fight is going to place you on one or, or two, one of two RNG paths. Okay, one of two RNG paths. This will become more relevant when uh, when we go for the token after the Axe Knight, and I explain a little bit about splicing and merging these two routes into a single route, uh, which will also be important later on. But at this point, what you need to realize is that depending on what frame you clear this text box is going to determine which rng path you're on if you're on one path you're going to get the magic waiver if you're on the other path you're going to get the knight and so you have to watch for uh, which one you get one of them is going to occur and in a lot of these cases one of them will occur sooner than the other so if you have an encounter that seems pretty quick hey, this is going to be uh, uh, the Magic Waver. If it's a knight, you find yourself walking around a little bit more and you're like, okay, it's going to be the knight. You actually have time to look at your notes and be like, okay, it's 10 and 13. Okay, so we'll do this a couple times just so you can see both. All right, but I don't want to spend too much time on it because this is part of the work that you would do in learning the game. So I'm just trying to show you how these notes are going to work. And so, as you can see here, I have an early alternative and late alter alternative. All right, the Magic Waver is going to be an encounter that's going to occur quicker if you're on that path. If you're on the other path, the night is going to be delayed, so that gives me time to kind of uh, prep for the night. So really, I just need to remember 1116. So I'll 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 be able to say this to me. So one, two, three, four, five, go holding A, because we're always going to buffer through this. Wait for the, the third on the long. One, two, three. So we get a fast one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Walk. And we're just waiting for our slime. And there's a second metal slime. Here we're just going to attack two. So watch. One, two. Now, technically, that's the third time you see the arrow. But this brings us to our next point in trying to read. Instead of always being forced and rushed to have to count the very first arrow, we just let that one go. So really, even though you see the arrow, uh, we wait for it disappears, then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all right? 
and uh, this will th th this will look uh, this will make more sense while you you, you play around with it. But um, so the neat thing is is no matter how long or which of these RNG paths we get you're going to do a different manipulation between each fight because we're actually merging into this RNG path that is going to guarantee you a metal slime. So if we got the RNG path with the Magiwavern and we did the manipulation to get out of it and start walking again, at that very moment that we start walking, we're on a RNG path that's good. Every single frame, is uh, every single time we walk, is going to be on the exact same path as if we had gotten the knight and did the RNG manipulation there. So it's it, it enables us to then be able to guarantee it, but we'd have to cause an encounter first, find out which RNG path we're on, do the proper manipulation in that fight to get back onto where we would encounter the second slime. So we'll do it again, one, two, three, four, five. Buffer and A. We're still holding left um, against against the wall. We're holding A now. And go on the long three. One, two, three. See, it's taking a while longer, so that means we got the night. So remember, ten and thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, I went on twelve. So that's not going to be good. So I'll do a slight delay to see if I can fix it. And it brings us to a second metal slime. Let's see if it's the same one. One, two. It is not. So what that means is that we skipped right over the metal slime. If, for example, you go early on something like that, where you went faster, I could have made an adjustment sooner by taking one step, doing a delay, and then walking again. That should work. All right, so that actually brings us then to our second metal slime. And the reason why I'm going through these particular fights is because this has the this particular spot with these four fights has the most variance of things you need to watch for. After this, pretty much all you have is the Axe Knight and the Dragon Lord fight. That's it. All right. Well, I'm sorry. You have the Goldman, the Axe Knight, and the Dragon Lord, and those are single fights, and they're the same every single time. This is the only point, uh, which is why I'm spending a little bit more time with it. All right. But let's go ahead and bring up the second slime. Um, slime number two. So once again, you'll have all these SRAM files, so you'll be able to utilize these. All right, and in this case, we're actually uh, doing plus two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Now remember, we're not counting the first arrow. That's like a default. So it's like entering in the fight. It's there. It disappears. All right. Now it's on us. Now we need to count. And we need to keep uh, keep track of that. It's kind of like just like a buffer. We're in the fight. Hey, the arrow is now active. And the reason being is that uh, if I just held A, I'm actually hitting that that first arrow. That first arrow is actually attack zero. And, what, and if that, uh, that arrow shows up and then disappears, and I press and buffer A, then I'm actually getting attack 0.5. So that's why we're actually not cause, you know, doing the first arrow number one, because we have manipulations that are zero. All right, so we have one, two. L1 is going to be the first tone of long note. Still holding A through the text boxes. So we're going to do one, two, three, one. 
One, two, three, four, five. Brings us to a second metal slime. Our third, our third metal slime. And so you can see that we entered in, we got the knight, which is the one that occurs more quickly. We used the uh, three commands. We went to, we moved the arrow to run. One, one, one. So that's, that's run plus one. All right, when we move there for the first time, remember, that would be zero if we buffered it in. If we waited for it, the, the arrow to disappear, that's 0.5. And when the arrow returns, that's actually our one, two, three, four count. Okay. So let's take a look at the third metal slime. Now at this point, this has the third and the fourth metal slimes. Now, I had to put together my own thing for this part. This may very well be exactly what Nescarnality has. But there wasn't enough variation in this particular part of the notes for me to, uh, from his, so uh, this would may be identical to what he's doing. But this works, which we'll, we'll do a couple times. Uh, let's pull up uh, slime number three, and you can see how the notes correlate to that. And um, so depending on whether you get the early night or the late wraith, uh, we're going to have a different, we're actually getting a different slime. So there's the, there may very well be the same slime where you can put these together, but I, I, I found these two different slimes. They work each time, and it can work for you as well. So let's go ahead and bring up a third slime. In this case, we're doing one, two, okay? One, two, one, two. And uh, holding A again, always. Go on L5. One, two, three, four, five. You didn't get the early ones, so we're just gonna run and go. Oops, had a delay. Just run and go. Hopefully that's the right wraith. No, it wasn't. Sorry about that. So, one, two, one, two. Whole day. We're gonna go on the fifth beat of the long tone. One, two, three, four, five. So we should get the wraith. Run right away. Actually, oops, yeah, you're supposed to run right away. I did run plus one. That's not gonna work. One, two, one, two. So I say in my head two and two. When I look at the notes, I'll just go two and two. One, two, three, four, five. I always try to go left just in case I forget where I'm at and I don't bonk over on the right. This makes sense. We're gonna run right away and just go. This hits this slime. So we're gonna do four and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. He's dead. And then you can death warp, as the notes tell you to do. You can just wait till the text box goes to clear. Well, when you can clear it, and then you're good. All right, so you'll just have to practice on uh, those fights. Okay, just you use the notes, practice on the fights. But as soon as you die, this is when we're gonna set up our next manipulation chain. So as soon as you die, don't forget to save it. Wait till you hear that noise. We're going to reset and we're going to continue. Now, just like last time, we're going to be uh, trying to clear the text box. This time, we're trying to aim for frame number one or two. We're going to watch the guard. The guard's either going to go right, left, or he's going to stay and then go right. Now, sometimes 
frame three, four, and five might have that same guard movement. That's why we have the backup, where we, we, we look at the girl that's outside of the king's throne room, and we're gonna watch for her movement to be up, down, down. Okay, up, down, down. So we're holding A, so we can uh, just buffer through clearing these. And then we have to let go of A once you start to see goodbye. Just as long as you've gotten the goodbye message, you don't have to hold A anymore. And be, begin to prepare to press right on a certain frame that's going to clear the text box. So you'll have to do this as many times as it's required. Or else, stay right. There's the right left. Up down down so we are on the right frame all right so now, now, now that we did that now um, for the menuing on stairs all right you can actually um, as, as long as your character is beginning to move from here to here on any particular stairs you can press and hold a okay and then as soon as um, it executes the box, you shift to pressing right. And then uh, what you're gonna do, as soon as you get to stairs, you're gonna press and hold left and then press A. So that once again, it's gonna execute on a very specific frame. Just like that. You'll have to practice it. Um, it and you'll definitely get the hang of it. So since we have that set up, we're going to go ahead and just pull up a save state where we have it, just to try to expedite our process here. And we're going to go to uh, um, our second split here, uh, to the cave. That's how we're going to walk it. All right, so this is where we got the right manipulation. We're out. Let's see if I can memorize this. I'm going to do two here. One, two. One here. Hopefully I don't mess up at all anywhere. Stop there. The first and last trees. Right here at the edge. We're going to bonk once. One, two, three. I'm going to listen for it now. Two bonks each. And uh, we'll slow that down in the cave a little bit. Sleep 1.5. Last turn. Bonk 10. Four, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, four, an attack, one, two, three, four, attack, five, one, two, three, four, five, I'm mashing right, clear this text box as soon as possible, if we get a scorpion, we'll do a run, two, Holding down, one, two, hold left, go in. Now you'll have to practice being in that dark cave. There's no shortcuts around it. You're just gonna have to uh, learn your, your two bonks timing. You just hold A here, that's two, three, four, and Five. Uh, the the only thing that's going to be difficult, so we're going to leave and come back in, because the one thing you don't want to forget is using up two of your keys. You only buy five. Oops. You're not manipulating anything at this point except for using up two of your keys from your inventory and placing this into your inventory. Now we can die and uh, set up our third split to go for the Axe Knight and the token.
So you can just walk back and forth here until you get a fight. Just attack and let them kill you. Now you have to be careful not to do anything different. If you kill the Goldman on a different frame, he's going to give you a different amount of gold. We don't want that because if he gives you too little, you won't be able to purchase the five keys. So we got that set up. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the, the, the notes in here. In the cave, basically you hold down until you hear bonk, bonk, hold right, bonk, bonk, down until you hear two bonks, right, down. You'll just get a feel for that. And then at that point, you're actually two steps away from the stairs. You're going to have to just get a feel for um, watching your character on when you can buffer in um, two steps away from the stairs. It's just something that you have to practice. But yeah, you're basically going left at that point after that uh, second bonk going down. It shouldn't take you too long uh, uh, working on that. Uh, in the Goldman fight itself, uh, this is the first case where we're seeing a spell. In this case, we're seeing the, the sleep spell. And just like the rest of your menuing, um, I, I was actually holding right. Now let's go to the Goldman fight and show you what it looks like. Uh, the rest of the instructions are pretty clear. Um, I do have in parentheses uh, next to, uh, you'll see B4 attack 2, you'll see parentheses in 13. That 13 is actually telling you how much damage it's going to yield. That's not too helpful because if you screwed it up and didn't get 13, well, there's nothing you can really do about it. Unless somehow you get lucky and you end up killing a... <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Okay, but anyways, uh, let's see, Goldman. We'll go to the Goldman fight. And uh, let's just take a look at our very first occasion of using a spell. I am holding right. Let's not do that. I'm holding right. I'm going to hit spell. And I'm holding down as soon as spell comes up. You'll have to just get used to it. And then you'll have to count. 1.5 so we'll do that a couple times one one half so he's asleep one and a half so we see it pop up for a one count as soon as that one count uh, arrow disappears we're going to buffer an A we're still using our me, I'm actually holding down at that point because I'm already holding down uh, at that point. So, one half. There he goes. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. Go. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Smash, smash. And sometimes you're not going to get that scorpion, but if you do get a scorpion, you're on that particular RNG path where you run into him. You just do a run two and just to, to, to do what we did. But uh, I think maybe men menuing to the sleep is the new element that uh, we're looking at here. All right, so that brings us to our third split. Now remember, we only have five splits, so um, this particular split, we're first going to just look at going to the Axe Knight. And then um, the Axe Knight fight, I think, other than the Dragon Lord fight, is the fight that you want to make sure that you have it mastered. Because this is the first time we're actually going to be doing that hurt spell. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's pull up uh, around the town cave. 
both beginning of the third split. We don't have to, as you can see, we're aiming for the first and second frame again in the, uh, in the, the King's Throne Room. And you can see that we're looking for the guard to go up, down, or stay left. And the girl outside, we're looking to see her go uh, uh, right, up, left. Uh, but we're going to pull up the, uh, the to the night route. Now, this is the first time in the manipulation route where we're actually uh, walking the same path we have done before. We're going to Hockness. That's how you pronounce it which is right by where we were where we were grinding on those metal slimes. So having those rhymes that I was telling you about, we are on the first split, which means we stop on the first tree, so on and so forth. That's a way for me to keep my brain in one particular path of stops. Because on this one, you know, we're on our way to the axe knife. Which means we just walk through. So let's notice how we're walking through these things. And we're going to stop on tree number two. Which means we're still walking through. Two and through, they rhyme. Okay. Stop under the hill. on the finger the corner of the mountain and the last turn there we go B2 sleep one two Holding up, tack 3.5, 1, 2, 3, disappear, go. And B1 hurt, B hurt spell. One, go. Tack 4.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, go. And hurt 0.5. which we're actually waiting for that first arrow to disappear. All right, so that brings us to the Axe Knight himself. Now, you'll have to get used to menuing for the Hurt spell. That's just something that's going to take time, and uh, you'll just develop a muscle memory, the timing, the feel for it. Sometimes it still feels a little awkward for me, which is why I'm still, I don't have a finished run yet, because I'm still uh, developing and practicing and being able to execute all this um, but you could you see the instructions there on how to uh, beat him and we've already gone over those particulars so you'll just have to practice it uh, once you execute it correctly a few times that'll be your basis for developing uh, better accuracy and you notice that the route here didn't have as many stops which is really nice All right, so once you've killed the Axe Knight, this is the very first time where you're not gonna have an audio or a visual cue for when you're clearing a text box. All right, and we're actually going to uh, pull up a save state for this so I can kind of show you what we're looking for. Because we're going to want to clear the text box uh, continue holding A with the A that we use to clear the text box to bring up the menu so we can search. Then we have to clear that text box. And we want to do those two things. Uh, they don't have to be frame perfect, but you need to be able to uh, get them as quickly as possible because we want to set up um, our route. Okay, and I'll actually bring that up because that's what we're on now. Well, actually, we're going to have to go through the, the Axe Knight fight. All right, so let's do the, the fight correctly here. One, two, sleep. 3.5, one, two, three, wait for it to disappear. B1 hurt. 
And I'm actually pressing right in the menu for her. One, go. 4.5, holding up. One, two, three, four, go. And I'm actually gonna do a save state here. Right. I'm actually buffering this in the save state inputs when I do that, by the way. Then I can, that's not gonna be right. Damage for 11, all right. So we're gonna press A here and clear text box there. Get on these two sands, I'm gonna do four. One, two, three, four, run. We were on the first tile, so we're just gonna walk out. All right, so I wanna explain what just happened there. All right, because we we, uh, we initiated the search and we cleared that text box quick enough, all right, within the first few uh, available frames to do it and didn't fail it, like once again, if you go one frame too early, you have failed it completely because it's gonna take your brain more than enough frames to realize what just had happened and it's not gonna work. Likewise, you don't wanna to wait too long. Otherwise, what happens is when you're in here, I actually, um, hopefully it'll let me walk over there. Okay, all right, so you could, you could still see it in the background. You'll see those two sand tiles. If you don't clear it fast enough, you won't be able to get to one of those two uh, sand tiles. You're going to move back and forth because we want to see which path we're on. We need to know which enemy we're going to encounter next on one of those two paths so that when we get either the, as you can see here, and I'll scroll up. So whether you get the uh, dragon or the wizard, you need to know exactly how to get out of that fight. So if you got the dragon, you're gonna you're gonna wait till it goes to run. One hit, hit A. You know buffer in there, and then we can do four commands for the wizard. Uh, little things like this you can just memorize. You know, hey, it's a wizard. Four commands go. Oh, it's a dragon. You know, I'm all gonna run this time. So actually, when you run with plus one from a dragon or do four commands for a wizard to run right away, you're actually exiting, exiting out of those fights on the exact same RNG values. So that every single thing that you do after that is going to be the exact same route, walking down to the token. So in this case, um, I also created a backup, which you can see. That is, if if we got the dragon or wizard on this, uh, see if I can keep, on that first sand tile, that's right next to the swamp on the right. If you get it right there, then uh, no matter what fight we get, the wizard or the dragon, we're gonna run, we're just gonna walk right out of the town. Here, let's, let's, let's pull one of those up. We're just gonna walk right out of the town. But if we're on the second sand tile, we need to, advance the RNG one uh, one slot uh, within the town itself. So let's go ahead and just, uh, let's just bring up the dragon. All right, so run plus one. So in this case, we're on the first, first square. That means we can just walk right out of the town as soon as we, we possibly can. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we're gonna just walk right out. If, if we had encountered that wizard or that dragon, oops, on this square, we're actually going to, and let's just, leave the town give yourself one extra step before you do it. The reason being is because if you're one step to the left, guess what? We need to leave the town on a very specific step. So we need to burn that extra step that we didn't get because we were one tile closer to the left. That's why when you're on the uh, on this uh, second tile, we don't have to do that. Okay. So uh, you do have to keep in mind what encounter you're getting and on what tile you're getting it. 
that is going to make a difference between uh, whether you take one extra step coming out of this area or not. So that we're ent exiting the uh, Hockness on the exact same RNG uh, slot. Uh, the other thing that I wrote down in here, which uh, um, Oijui was helping me with and I uh, came up with while he was helping me is what happens if I'm not on one of these two tiles? Let's say I didn't make it there because we found the armor on those little trees over there where the x Knight fight was. Well, I have two swamp tiles before I get to these two. So what happens if I get an encounter on one of those? What if I don't uh, execute all those things and clear those text boxes fast enough in order to even get to these tiles before I hit one of these two encounters? Number one, we're always going to hit one of these two encounters unless you're too late in clearing things and we're actually beyond those encounters on the RNG paths. Um, but in this case, if they occur early, I created a backup for it. And that is, if we're on the first, I mean, we uh, get an encounter, we're just going to leave the town. If it's on the second, we're going to do one extra step. Kind of just like we, we did uh, on the sand. But the only difference is going to be is that when we leave the town, once you've memorized each of the stop locations, we're going to stop one step behind uh, where we would normally stop. Uh, and uh, a quick and easy way of memorizing that is um, the swamp tiles are early and therefore we need to do one, uh, one tile early on all of our manipulations. So in this case, uh, we're leaving right away because we got the sand. One, two, three, four, five, go. Okay, so in this case, instead of going to that stopping point, we just do everything one tile early. So instead of doing it here, and all the, the stops that we do, we're gonna do it one tile soon, all, all the way across. So that's a nice little fix for, oh crap, I didn't clear that stuff fast enough. Now let's, let's go ahead and just uh, do the route. Now what's nice is no matter what you get, no matter what of those four tiles you get, we're gonna do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five. In terms of knowing where to stop. Stop here in the last hill. Last hill, last tree. Last grass, first swamp, and then we can grab our tile. Clear as soon as you can, do a slight delay. Well, my clear wasn't very fast. See, when you're doing the text box, when you're waiting on the text box, every single, you know how like the RNG slot goes one per step on the map. Well, when you're waiting on a text box, that slot progresses one per every frame of the game. So that means it'll it'll do that. Um, you know, 60 different times. It'll step forward uh, in the RNG slots uh, 60 times in an entire second because it'll change every single frame. All right, so once again, uh, in this case, uh, we've died. You don't have to save it, but you can for safety. But we're gonna continue because the, now we are on, um, we don't even have notes for this because none of this is manipulated. This is why we don't have to worry about uh, resetting it and everything. So this is uh, this is the fourth split. This is the calm before the storm in this game. The calm before the storm. So since we are here, we are going to grab this item. Now keep in mind, 
if you did not grab all this stuff and you forgot, then these things weren't written into your inventory, then you're not going to be able to uh, manipulate your way on the fifth split. Because this is not manipulated, we're just going to run from everything. The reason why this split is or has been non-manipulation is that you have to use two keys in order to get down into Garen's grave. There's one in Garen's grave, but to be able to gain access to it in the town, you have to clear a text box after opening a door, and then you have to clear another one uh, when we uh, are down in there. So unless you want to come up with a route that manipulates all of that, like Ouija Wee has, Now we don't want to grab, remember, we don't want to grab any extra stuff. Because anytime you put something into your inventory and or remove it, it's going to change certain RNG values. So when we come, um, everything is always going to be the same. All our stats, all our inventory at the very beginning of every single thing. Even if, let's like, say, I used a torch from my inventory and then went and bought a torch, well, number one, my gold is going to be different now. And, and even if it isn't because I died and I lost it all, I have removed something from my inventory and I have placed it back. So it's not just what you have in your inventory. It's the act of the game removing it and writing it back in is going to change how the RNG is going to be uh, influenced. All right, so we're going to use the torch now. Don't forget that you have to use the torch. If you don't use the torch, then it's going to be in your inventory and it's going to mess up our next split. But that, sh that shouldn't be a problem because you need the torch to see if you don't have it memorized. So that would be the second uh, text box that you're going to have to clear if you're going to do this. Now we're just going to run from everything. It's okay if you get hit. You don't have to use any heals, don't need to do any herbs because you have Erdrick's armor. So you actually are healing 1 HP every step that you take. And that's unfortunate and a waste of time. And a good thing I woke up too. Now, once you're familiar with uh, how to walk through here and what the maps look like, you can look at uh, vgmaps.com and you can see what each of these look like. Uh, so I have like a picture in my head of what they look like uh, when I was first going through this and after I went through it enough times, um, I, I just know where I, where I need to walk. Okay. So we're gonna grab the harp and we're gonna death warp. Uh, I don't like the Wolf Lord because he has a 50% chance of using Stop Spell, which can really prolong this fight if you're doing it for speedrun purposes. And there's there's our champ. There you go. Thy hits decreased by 16. Do you see that? That, that's what we mean by die hits, instead of die hit points. Alright, so now we have to save it because we need to set up our next split. Alright, so in the past there's been a few different ways of dealing with this last part of the game. Now at this point all we have is our path to the Dragon Lord. Now we're going to grab some stuff on the way, but uh, this is pretty much the, the end part of, of the game. It's the longest and the hardest. Um, it used to be where there was a manipulation route 
from the king's room all the way to the uh, the, the uh, you utilizing your item uh, the, to, to get the, uh, the, the the rainbow the, the, use the rainbow drop to get the bridge all right because arrow manipulation wasn't discovered then and so it really depend on uh, uh, on what frame you you did that so what happened is somebody would you would use th that item to get the bridge to, so that they could next time come uh, go to Sh uh, Charlotte Castle so you have to do a death warp come back here set up another uh, manipulation chain all the way into the castle all the way down to the sword get it do a death warp and then come all the way back once again and go straight down to the dragon lord so really this split has that i want to show you is going to put all of that together in a single split because we could do arrow manipulation for the item well guess what now we don't have to worry about having to do um uh, these we don't have to do the death warp at the bridge in this route, we're actually going to grab the sword, and then we're going to run into an encounter, and then make our way down to the Dragon Lord, which is perhaps one of the more difficult things to do because we're going to be um, executing this right here in the dark where we can't see anything at all. And see, I already messed it up there. But basically, we get out of the fight and then we have to go back and forth like that until we hit an encounter after clearing a text box within the first couple frames okay but we're, we will get to that point but just, just to explain this particular route that, that, that we're doing is going to put all of those together in the same split the same RNG chain so we're not dying at the bridge we're not dying at the sword all right, that's how it used to be all right, so the first thing about this path, and once again, we're not gonna, uh, let's, let's go ahead and just do this. So we're looking for left down, stay right. Left down, stay right. I'm still going early. Hopefully I get it soon. So I'm gonna expedite the, uh, This in of itself takes time because I think it's 20 seconds every single time that you have to uh, do this. And we're looking for frame one and two. Left down, stay right. I'll give you a hint. Up, down, down. Okay, that's so just like that. I'll, I'll give you a hint. If you find yourself like doing that for like 10 minutes, I guarantee you that it's not because you're not hitting the right frame. It's because the RNG up to this point has been manipulated incorrectly. That means you either did something you weren't supposed to you, you, you uh, either didn't uh, uh, use your keys in Remolder to get the wings. Uh, it means that you forgot to grab the the suns, uh, the, the stones of sunlight on the split to where you grabbed the heart. Any little tiny thing that you missed is going to make it so it doesn't work. So if you find yourself sitting here for five minutes not able to get that frame it's probably because you missed one of those things in which case you could just look in your inventory and be like oh i forgot the wings or, or uh, oh i forgot the stones of sunlight you can just take a quick look and uh, make sure everything is uh, where it needs to be uh, these values for uh, level health mp gold experience all of that stuff are going to be exactly these values every single time uh, that you're here for the split so let's go ahead and do the walk now. We're going to go to the staff. 
and this uh, the staff is fun because we have two text box clears that we have to do uh, so we're going to go to the final split and we're going to do our walk to the staff path to staff this will just save us some time here all right okay so in the notes you notice that it says delay 1.5 t we are actually uh when we leave the castle we're gonna wait one two uh, you can you can hear the tones right one two so right before the just before you would hear the second we're gonna go so let's see if we can do this everything works well this is the second time we're overlapping our walking but uh, you'll you'll get good at uh, not mixing them together you can see what this looks like stop here Stairs, reaction to the stairs in the right frame. We gotta talk to this guy. Alright, continue to hold A until he disappears. Take the uh, treasure chest. And we need to clear this as soon as possible. We're gonna take, and then as soon as you see, like, found these staff of rain, prepare, because to clear that text box. You have to clear both of those as quickly as possible. I mean, within, like, two or three frames because as soon as you come out of here we're going to want to make it to these two trees and go back and forth I haven't tested if you uh, if you get an encounter on the two grass before if you could do the same thing you can out of Hawkness where you would uh, keep the same manipulations uh, you would just make sure that you always stopped um, uh, one square before I haven't tested that out maybe it works maybe it doesn't but in this case as long as you execute this correctly you won't have to worry about it which we'll do a couple times and once again we're uh, we have to determine which RNG path we're on so we're causing an encounter as you can see we're either going to get a Magidraki or a Scorpion and depending on which one we get, we're going to do uh, a different manipulation, both inside and outside of the fight. I think this is the first time that we're going to have, um, uh, that you have to take note of a manipulation outside of the fight based on the enemy that you get. Before, uh, in Hawkness, we saw that there was a, uh, an additional manipulation based on what tile you were on. Um, whether you need to have an extra step before you leave Hawkness but in this case uh, we actually have to do a manipulation outside of the fight so let's say uh, where are we last grass no last second three this is fine all right so no matter unlike in Hawkness it doesn't matter which of these uh, tiles of these trees that we encounter one of these all right so it doesn't matter if you get this one or the one just to the right we're always going to do the exact same thing all the way down to uh, get the rainbow drops all right so once we do the two text clears which actually let's do that so you can see what that looks like let's do our text clears and then we'll do our manipulations how many times it takes me to get it I see I wasn't holding a for as long as I was supposed to and I uh, tried to clear that box too early 
So you'll want to utilize the save state and do this over and over and over and over again. Uh, worst case scenario, you have to reset and do the whole split over again. Oops. And depending on uh, what time you're going for, you may not be able to tolerate that in your run. If you wanted a nice clean run without having to, oh I got here, I failed, I reset, and that's included in your run. Um, it, I mean if you want to be that perfect about it, then you'll, you'll definitely want to um, spend some time getting a feel for when you need to clear the text boxes which I always seem to forget when I'm not sitting here practicing it. Those two looked pretty good. Go back and forth, we get the scorpion, run right away, get tier and go up and down. So that's what that up and down means in the notes. So we got the scorpion, so we knew we had to do a run plus one. They're both run plus one, but. Go here. One, two. Oops, I went too early. Uh, let's see here. So we're looking at. All right. So uh, as you saw, uh, we just have to be mindful of what the manipulation is going to be here. Um, uh, yeah, for the Magidraki that that we just did, or the Scorpion. In this case, uh, one way to help remember this is that we're always going to do a run plus one no matter what you get you're going to do one plus one but the question is are we doing any in fight or out of fight manipulations and uh the one way i i, I remember that i need to do an additional command in the magic fight is that uh on, of the two rng paths you're going to run into the magic jackie quicker on its path sooner all right, sooner than if we're on the other path, uh, the scorpion is lit. So I think of that as a more aggressive enemy. So that's the one where I'm going to want to do a manipulation in the fight. That's just how I, I, I tend to memorize it. So we're going to do the command, then the run plus one. Uh, but with the scorpion, as you saw, I got to that tip of the mountain. I went up, down. And once again, it doesn't matter which uh, tree tile that we're on. We're always going to get the tip of that mountain, go up, down, just for consistency's sake and then follow everything down. So let's take a look at that path where it's executed correctly. And I'll actually have, that's, that's what was bothering me there. I didn't have the, the notes for the actual what we're doing here, which is to the drop. The notes now for to the drop. Now that's in the drop cave at the staff. Okay, so we just need to choose one of these, and yeah, we were already on, on one for that. No, no, we want to bring up the Magidraki, that way we can uh, do the walk. There we go. Alright, so B, 1, and there's no manipulations outside of that fight because we already did the command but the, that's the uh, last water we get the last tree I like to call this the uh, last nook one two One, two, it's out of cave, see that? Sand, mountain, water, one, two, 
here. Here, here. Ah, that was late. But we want to come here and go up and down right here. After we did that, which we had done it wrong. Um, it's the, and we'll actually pull it up there. So I should, I showed the route down here and uh, well, what that looks like. All right, and so now we are at the drop cave. So I'll pull up that. There is one thing I'm going to have to look up and just double check, and that is going to be the the route to the castle. Just want to make sure that my my stops are uh, correct before you show those off. I forgot to do that before, but we're we're okay. That this is already going to be uh, pretty long. So we're going to want to turn towards him before we hit A, otherwise you screw up and he runs over. As soon as it turns uh, not gray again, that's when we're going to want to go. Oops. And that's going to happen to you as well sometimes. So we're going to go up and down until we get a fight. If he attacks like he did there, we're going to do a command, run, and just go. Okay. Uh, if he did the stop spell, and it doesn't matter what square, just as long as you know what he's doing. He's doing the, the spell, so we're going to do run, go up, down, and then do our thing. And so I did stop. Um, here, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to do the walk. Two. Just give me a brief moment to uh, verify this, the spots where I want to. Do a double check this walk here. Okay, we're actually doing a stop there. Is it two? No. Almost done. Just give me a moment. One, two. So if he's there, we can just do it here or here. So on that, that tip of there in the top. Got it. Two. Okay, so let's just let's, let's dive in. Let's do this. All right, so because we're walking to the castle, now once again, you won't need these notes to walk to the castle. You, you know, this is just for documentation purposes to try to write out something for it. Um, but uh, what we want to be mindful is what particular um, uh, Wolf Lord we're getting. Is he going to attack? Is he going to do the spell? And thankfully, when he does the spell, uh, we actually have time to respond to it. But in this case, we're just going to run right away, go up, down. And we did a delay there on the last mountain. Do a delay here. Stay in the grass right before the turn to the bridge. Right here in the middle of this grass here. 
do a two here, one, two, here, 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 and this is at menu part. You need to get here, you need to menu to item, and just hold A. So it's kind of like doing your hurt spell where you're holding right in the fight. Um, except for uh, we're going to have to uh, go right and then down. And it, it does feel weird though. It's just a little bit. Yeah, let's run from this dude. And you can either go down and right or right and down. It doesn't matter. Just as long as you're consistent, whatever's consistent for you. But you're going to want to use those arrow manipulations where you're holding right right away, you're, you know, then you're holding down as soon as you can. And then we're, um, as soon as it moves down, we're holding right and A, so it'll execute. And once again, we're holding right and A through this as well. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, continue to hold A until you start to see the everything flash, then press and hold left. Okay. So you'll get the hang of it. You'll practice the walk from that cave um, all the way here. And uh, we'll see if we can um, actually get that here. And we'll probably end up doing a safe state just before we get to. So, castle. Now don't we have to the castle? We have just the final split. Yeah, we already had what we needed. Alright, so we got the... Uh, Let's pull up the actual notes for this, and uh, we'll do the attack. So, command run. Uh, you know, you remember uh, when we did the um, the command with the magic draki, which we considered more aggressive. Well, I do the same thing with the wolf lord. The wolf lord that that attacks is more aggressive, so he gets the command. Okay. So let's see if we can execute this. Uh, so command, run, and go. We stopped right there. It's hard to tell, but I'm stopping here. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do a save state. So hopefully I can just nail this the first time. Otherwise, we'll change our inputs, so we can see what it looks like. Maybe we got it, maybe we didn't. But you'll find out real quick. Yeah, there you go. I uh, did not execute it correctly. So let's execute it correctly so you can have the whole route. Uh, to the castle, which is just a couple more stops. Now let's change the uh, save state to uh, left and B. Left and B, and we'll do our load state to be uh, left and select, I guess. That's really weird, but. I don't think that'll work. Let's do up in A. Should be fine. Oops. Up in A. For the load state. Get out of there. Go. Oops. I just, <laughs> just did a save state. I thought that was the load. 
up in A is going to be the load, left in B is going to be the save. So we can have full footage of what this is supposed to look like. Oops, and I actually just, one of the downfalls of having to use so many different input combinations in the game itself. Up and in. get this right this time. Excited to get into the dark. Show that off, that's pretty fun. <laughs> One, two. Stop on the edge here. Here, let's do safe state here. holding A that whole time till we start to see the flashing. Hold left. Stop there. Stop here. Stop here. And then we are in the castle. I'm trying to remember how to do this. Bring up the uh, the castle now that we're there. That's that's what that's supposed to look like. I'm glad that worked out so well. All right. So um, because we had to clear another text box upon finding the stairs, uh, we're gonna have to find out which RNG path we are on, which means we have to trigger another encounter. So we either are gonna get a star waver or a wizard. And in each case, uh, these you will want to memorize because uh, I'm going to have to memorize them because there is a different manipulation in the fight and there's a different manip manipulation for them outside of the fight. So you will want to make sure that you, uh, you have those memorized. Uh, so the cave uh, castle entrance, go ahead and pull that up. Um, let's Alright, so uh, as soon as we come in, we're going to do one here in the opening. Alright, so one, one, two, just underneath those stairs, one, two, next to that door. Then we're going to do it on the other side of the door for three, one, two, three. And then on the last brick here before this weird part, and then we're going to have to clear that up. Uh, Axe Knight, that's not good. That means we that means we did it wrong. We didn't clear the text fast enough so that we could get us a Star Waver or a Wizard. But that's what we're going to want to do. Do a stop here. One, two. One, two. One, two, three. Here. And once again, I, 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 I took too long. So you're going to have to practice clearing that text box. Uh, each of the text boxes in this game that you have to clear have a different amount of text to it, which means the timing is going to feel a little bit different. So you're going to have to familiarize with each of the text box clears. But uh, so that we can expedite this and not prolong it due to my skills, um, we're going to show you what each of these uh, manipulations are going to look like. So in this case we have the, I'm not even sure what stair manip uh, means, but anyways, the, the star waver. Uh, what we're going to do, uh, so we're going to do a uh, two point, we're going to two, then point five. We're going to do a back and forth manip from one, two, just like that. Alright, 
So I'll, I'll do it again. We're running on 0.5, but we do a command, command, run on 0.5. So no matter whether we're on this square when we hit the encounter or this square, we're always going to walk past the stairs, okay? One, two, half, walk past the stairs, back, take it. Now once again, every single time I go to hit the stairs, I hit A, I'm buffering down. As soon as it hits stairs, I'm buffering left and then pressing A. Alright, so I'm always I'm always doing that. So we do this one, two, half, go past, buffer, left, and down. Alright, so that's what the star waver looks like. Uh, the wizard uh, th th thankfully has um, a similar manipulation, but we're not waiting for 0.5. We're just going to do uh, 1, 2, and then run, just like that. Now, I want you to watch my character for a second. I I'm going to buffer holding left outside of that fight, okay? Watch. As soon as you see me, I'm already facing left. I'll, I'll do it again. Oops. That's bad. What you're going to want to do is buffer nothing. Wait until you see your character facing down, facing you, and then we're going to go left. All right, so this is like a delay manipulation. So it's one, two, wait till he faces left and then go. Sorry, not wait till he faces down and then go. So you should see that little movement at that point. That's that's the delay manipulation. One, two, wait until he faces down, and then we go down into the stairs. Alright, so now that we we, we got this point, um, we're going to use the same safe state, but we're going to look at the map. I'm going to make this extra big now. All right, this map will also be available for those who are interested in this. Oh, I sure wish I could make this really huge. Um, I will initially show you the map that we're looking at. Alright, so we're, um, we're coming out at A here in the top, top left, and we're going to make our way all the way across to the right. right. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of crap, and this is all in the dark, okay? Um, but what you can do, as soon as we come out, we're gonna uh, we're gonna hold down, and then we're gonna bonk, and you're gonna see a three. That means you're gonna bonk three times. You're gonna hear this. One, two, three. Then you're gonna buffer in right, and so you're gonna run into every single wall, except for some that are in front of stairs. But those are gonna be labeled, okay? Um, so as you're holding right, um, after you bonk three times there at the top, you're going to go bonk twice, press up, bonk twice, press hold right, bonk twice, come down, bonk twice, and so on and so forth. We're just going to, every single time we hit a wall, we're going to hear that. Every single time. If so if there isn't any number, it's always going to be a two bonk, unless it's in front of stairs. Uh, if it's not going to be a two bonk, it's going to be a three or a six or um, or a four. But I have those labeled on what that would look like. So let's just do this first part in the dark here after this fight. Hold down. One, two, three. One, two, three. We're at the six coming up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five, five. Then we hit the wall. Come back and hit the stairs. All right, so you heard, and maybe you were able to follow along on the map a little bit there, but let's go ahead and just lower this. This is going to be kind of uh, a challenge to show. Let me put from America on top, so you can always see that. That way we can have the map and I can just move the map over. All right, 
So you can see you can see my character. So we'll go through that first first map uh, section here again, okay? Try to follow along on the map. Two, three, two. So I I said there isn't bonk in front of stairs, except for when it's labeled. In this case, uh, we are bonking at the stairs, and then we do that as soon as we hit we hear bonk bonk. We move left, then we move right and hit the stairs. So there's a little bit of movement manipulation that's going on there, which uh, you were just able to see. All right, so other than following the map and always bonking on a wall twice, otherwise stated, and not doing it uh, in front of stairs unless it's labeled, and being mindful of the back and forth manipulation, in this case is an L down there, to, to, to tell you that you need to go left and then back right into the stairs. Now, other than those things, there's uh, two other things to keep in mind. And that is, uh, there are going to be instances where, um, I'm not sure how, you, how I can show you my cursor. But if you look at um, the end of the first map, there's a J. All right, then you see a little yellow line. That's indicating now that it's going to go into this next section. And there's another J there. It's labeled J. So that's where we're coming out, because we went down into J, so we're coming out of J. All right. On the, we come out, we hold right, bonk, bonk, down for two, right for two, and guess what? Now we have to go down for one, and then buffer right without any audio cue whatsoever. And the best way that uh, I've learned to do that is to, um, after you hear the bonk bonk, you can press down, uh, you can j just press down for like a very quick second, like, like that. You, you just press down really quick and then t to, t to the right. That sh you you can see how that'll work, and and because it's taking your down input and you're holding right real fast, that's going to buffer in your 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 right move. Those aren't as bad. So let let's let's do uh, let's do that particular. Um, looks like a big plus or. Now let's pull up a save state for that one so you can kind of see what it looks like when we actually do it. Uh, that's going to be dark number two because it's the, the, the second uh, mark, map. But that's how these are labeled. Each of those are, the, the first one is going to be, you can just hit after a save state on a wizard or on the star waiver just before you hit the stairs, then you can hit the dark number one. But dark number two is going to be the second map. That's This is the one that we're, we're going to be looking at. And usually it's set at the end of the previous one so that you can have the entire second map to practice. So we're going to hold right so we can get to these stairs. This took us to the end of one. All right, so one of the, the tricks or one of the things that you'll have to develop is you'll be moving your eyes back and forth between the dark you know, or the screen watching your animation and watching the map. All right, some people prefer to have written notes. Uh, I, I could not make that work for me so I created this map. Um, but you need to be able to get your eyes right where it needs to be like immediately, which is why uh, you're going to have to practice this over and over and over and over again. All right, so in this case, as soon as I hit those stairs, my eyes need to go right to where the J is in the next next spot so that I can 
follow along uh, with my imagination. Okay. That's that little move. Oops, let's just let's, let's, let's do that again. Quick one. Quick one. Quick one. That was another quick one. All right, just like that. So you're going to have to get familiar with that, um, the uh, the bonk bonk, and then the the, the 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 quick input, the left right, or up uh, up up uh, or, or or right down. Those are the easiest, where there's uh, a turn immediate turn that you have to do, but there's not going to be an audio cue for it. All right. Uh, okay, so there's that. The harder one is going to come up on um, the next map, which we're at now, because we have to now, um, as you, so we went into K, and now we're coming out of K. We're following the, the, the map uh, progression. And uh, as you see, there's a four bonk there after holding right. And then I have to do two squares down and then go to the left but there's not gonna be an audio cue for this. So, um, once you are hitting the wall for four, then you might as well look up at your guy and watch his walking animation for one, two, and then press and hold left. And then, then you have a, a significant walk before you do two bonks again. Get your eyes to the map where you need to be and go, which uh, we'll go ahead and do that. We'll pull up a dark, Three, which is going to place us at the end of two. Uh, and then what we'll do after this, we'll jump ahead um, because I'm just showing you the different aspects of the map. I'm not going through absolutely everything, all right? Because it'll make uh, the tutorial just way too long. All right, so here on this save state, we'll just buffer it in, and we'll be holding right. One, two. Did you see it? <laughs> I'll do it a couple times. One, two. Hit the stairs. Hold right for one, two, three, four. One, two. I'm not counting one, two, and just counting. That's not loose counting. I'm actually looking at his animation. I will actually make this image bigger. And this this should help to see his walking animation. And I'll I'll do I'll I'll do this twice so that when I'm walking down, I'm looking at the screen because I want to be able to uh, look at his steps. Okay. So watch. One, two, three, four. One, two. Just like that. I'll do it one more time. One, two, three, four. One, two. And then we continue. Okay. So we have a much better look at that. All right. So the only other thing that you need to do is just practice through the maps. Practice where to look. Practice where to bonk. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. You can send me a whisper or whatnot. All right, so that brings us to grabbing the treasure chest. Grabbing the treasure chest. All right, so let's go ahead and do a... Let's uh, see which map that is. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to pull up map seven. Put that there. All right, so map seven here. I should place us before that. I, I, yeah, okay. Um, actually, no. Let's just go right into the, the chest. Let's see, see where that's at. 
All right, so that's me coming off the stairs of F. All right, so this goes right down into here. So once we enter into uh, this area, as you can see from the map below, uh, we're looking at um, where there's the picture of the Cheser chest uh, with an F next to it. It's literally just four squares, okay? So as soon as we come off these stairs, you know, uh, we just hold right and then down and just go straight to take cl and clear the text box as once again as quickly as possible because this is, um, we need to um, get one of two encounters. All right, so in this case, let me go ahead and uh, lower this because we know where we're at, we know what we're looking at. All right, uh, let's get the notes for it. I still need to redo my notes on this because I don't need all this text anymore. Uh, but what we're going to look at is perhaps one of the more difficult things to execute in this game. Uh, and really, I just, I just want you to recognize this right here. Dragon 1, Dragon 2, Wizard 1, and Wizard 2. All right, so if you, if you clear this text box fast enough, you're going to get one of two different encounters, depending on which RNG path you're on. You're either going to get a dragon or you're going to get a wizard. But you also need to keep note of which enemy you get and on which of these squares. Are you going to get it on the one immediately to the left of the treasure chest or back on the square where the treasure chest was? Because once again, as soon as we grab this treasure chest, we're going to do this back and forth motion in the dark. It's a certain back and forth rhythm that you have to get down because if you end up going two to the left or two to the right, you're going to bonk and that's going to screw it all up. You don't want to do that. You want to clear the text box as soon as possible. And you're going to clear it by pressing left. And then you're going to go back and forth without bonking on anything in the dark. So you got to practice that with them and you have to get an encounter. But you need to watch what direction your guy is facing when the encounter starts to kick in. If he's facing to the left, well, that means he's going to be just underneath the stairs. All right. So that's going to be place number one. If your character's walking to the right, he's facing right when the encounter strikes, you're going to be on the square where the treasure chest was, so you're going to be two steps away from the stairs. You'll have to go back one to the left and then up to hit to the stairs. Now, uh, depending on which enemy you get on which particular square is going to determine what type of manipulation that you're going to do. All right, so you can see the four different variations there. Now, if that's not bad enough, when you get to the room with the Dragon Lord, you need to remember exactly which of these you had. Because, uh, let me see if I'm going to be able to show it. Because depending on which of these you got, whether it was the dragon on the first, or a wizard on the second, or a dragon on the second, or a wizard on the first, guess what? You're going to have two different manipulations to do before talking to the Dragon Lord. So, yes, I think you really need to memorize all four of these. And then even during a run, you have to memorize which particular uh, enemy you got and on what square. Because if you got the dragon on the first square or the, or the wizard on the second square, you're going to uh, do a very specific mani manipulation in front of the Dragon Lord which I'll show you here real quick because we're actually talking about it because this is related. Everything else is just another walk to this point. So let me just jump ahead real quick to um, what this manipulation in front of. Now this is if, um, now of course I'm not going to show you each of the four manipulations. I might sh show you two of them um, uh, outside of the, the treasure chest. Uh, but as far as the... Um, the manipulation here, I also have save states for these so that you can practice each of the manipulations. These are SRM files that you can that you can use. 
Uh, we're going to do the uh, Dragon 1, Wizard 2 manipulation. Uh, we're going to add that in there and pulled up. So as we're walking, we're going to get here and go 1, 2, th we're going to do 1, 2, 3, and then talk without the bonk. 1, 2, 3, just like that. 1, 2, 3, talk. And that's only if we had gotten the dragon on the first square or the wizard on the second. If we had gotten the dragon on the second square or the wizard on the first, we're going to do this other manipulation, which you've probably seen Ness Cardinality do. All right, which, which apparently I didn't create that safe state. Here, let me, let me uh, make a note here. We'll actually just do the manipulation. So, uh, create the uh, Dragon Learn Manip number two. Let's just pull up the first one and I'll show you what it looks like. I don't think there are any encounters. Now, the reason why I have two different ones is that so that you can see. So we do uh, down, up, down, delay. All right. So you, you come down here, you go up, you go down, right? Non-stop. We're going to go one, two, press, uh, press up, but, but you get your A ready to buffer. Okay. One, two, and go just like that. Go down there. Up, down, one, two, up, and buffer in. The reason why I had each of these is so that if somebody wanted to practice the uh, that particular manipulation and then go straight into the Dragon Lord fight, they could do that. You couldn't do it here because you're going to get different RNG. You're not going to be able to manipulate the Dragon Lord, which is there's only one fight for it. All right, so let, let's go back now. Let's uh, let's look at just a couple of the. Um, it was in the dark. Uh, after the treasure chest, we're either going to get a wizard or a dragon. So I'll just I'll just show what uh, uh, two of these look like. So let's just pull this down here, and uh, we're getting near to the end of our tutorial. Um, Hopefully, if there are any, any questions, um, I will begin asking for them as soon as I get into the... Uh, as soon as I start talking about the Dragon Lord fight and showing the Dragon Lord fight, if there is any questions that people have asked during this, I've had my chat down, I'll, I'll pull up the chat and take a look to see if there's any questions. So that's the time when you would want to type them. Uh, but let's just do... Um, and it doesn't matter which, one's, which one we do. Uh, let's do dragon one on the dragon on the first square here and you can see there that we're going to do a run 1.5 we're going to press left and bonk for four All right one go one two three four up and that didn't work just make sure i did this right oh i think i only bonked for three so one go one two three four Oh, I wasn't pressing and holding just a second. One half, one, two, three, four. There you go. You gotta press and hold the A, because you're only ste stepping up. So really, you just kind of like tap up and then press and hold A so we can get, get to the menuing. But uh, if, we, if we get this drag and it's one and a half, one, two, three, four, and you don't want to do that that fast. One, go, one, two, three, four. Get the stairs and then begin in the dark again. So you want to practice with the map because I'm not going to go through this all the way to. Um, if you want to see it perfectly navigated, you could just look at Ness Card's uh, 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 most recent uh, submission on Speedrun. And that way you'll be able to see what all of this looks like. All right. You can watch all of his runs to see all of these things.
it's just to, to explain uh, what the notes look like and everything. So the last thing that we're going to look at is um, before we get to the Dragon Lord fight, so no questions yet, I might not see them, is that uh, we're going to walk to the Dragon Lord. All right. So we have to walk to the Dragon Lord, and we have little notes here for us to remember uh, what the manipulation is going to be. But this is something that you could probably just remember. You might not want to glance over. Uh, at the very least, you're going to remember which uh, which uh, encounter and on what square, and you'll have plenty of time to glance over on the final stretch to uh, the Dragon Lord, which will show right now. Let's see if I can uh, remember how to do this walk. Oh yeah, uh, let's let's look at one last thing on the map. It's going to be this final stretch to uh, you on the very bottom of this map here. You notice that you're just walking to the right, but guess what? We're not bonking on anything, and there's going to be no visual cues except for just one square before you get to the stairs. As soon as you start to see the stairs, you got to press and hold A to, to buffer this in. You're just going to have to practice that and just get a feel for how many steps from off the stairs, and you can watch your animation. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, press and hold A. Um, you could do it that way too, which is probably best to watch your actual uh, movement off uh, off of S going to you on that. So that's uh, another place where you're going to need to to work on that. But anyways, let's let's get our uh, map back down and. Uh, Uh, unfortunately, I had to I had to pull the map up, but okay, this will look a little sloppy for, for a little while, but it's not that big deal. You know, it's a tutorial, okay. Uh, but as long as you can see, you can see the notes down here. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna hit these stairs. We're gonna come out. All right. So uh, as it says, we're gonna do the third brick. We're gonna do two in the opening. I'll show you where that is. Two on the first block, one on the last, and uh, I'll need to fix this. So the two in the opening on the second. Okay, let's let's see if we can do this. Uh, that this would be the third third brick. Okay. Here, one two, one two. I think one is that correct? I gotta make sure I have that right. Two in the opening, two in the first brick, one in the last corner. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm showing it to you correctly. One, two, one, two, one. We're delaying this corner. Read for this opening. Same thing here, but one, two. And uh, this is where uh, you could glance at your notes to see if you're going to do three. We did one, two, three. Go and talk to them. Or if we're going to be doing the up down manipulation below. All right, so let's just dive right into the Dragon Lord fight. And you'll see phase one and phase two. Man, that's really e eating over everything, isn't it? Okay, anyways, just focus on the bottom and never mind anything else. And that is the uh, phase one. So let's pull up phase one. It's a, it's super easy. 
super easy. You'll, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you what it looks like. Hopefully I don't screw it up because I said it was easy. All right. So um, we're going to do uh, two and two. And this is the way I'll talk to myself. One, two, one, two. Attack two. One, two. Attack three. One, two, three. Two point five. One, two, and go. Three. One, two, three. One point five. One disappears, go. One point five. One disappears, go, and four point five. One, two, three, four, and go. Now here's your four point five. And this takes us to phase two. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, go. Six, five point five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and go. Three and six. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five point five. One, two, three, four, five, go. Ten, two point five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I screwed that up with the menuing, but you can see you can see how this is working. Let's go to phase two and uh, let's go over it again and not mess it up. But you can see how easy it is to uh, try to do your A input too quickly when you're trying to go down to the um, the way I like to do it. And I, there are two, two different ways of doing this. Uh, I like to go straight to the hurt uh, spell and then count off there. The reason why I like to do that is because let's say I did screw up like that. There's still a chance that I could save it. If I just went to item, for example, or I go to spell and I didn't, uh, and it's still on heal, there's still a chance that I could menu off it and hit hurt, as opposed to just waiting for the blinking on the uh, on the fight like this. But guess what? If you go when you need to, and you accidentally get caught up on heal and you're not going down to hurt, I don't have a chance. But if I but I if I first menu over here like this and I don't pull down, I can count as soon as I get to heal, okay? Then I can be like one, two, three, four, and then I can move down and hit, right? I, I could, I could uh, move down and hit. So I still have an opportunity to save it if I try to menu to her first. Don't wait with for the arrow blinking um, later. One, two, three, four for the sleeve. Two, five point five. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go. Six, five point five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Wait for it disappears. Three and six. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five point five. One, two, three, four, five, and go. Ten, two point five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. One, two, and go. Seven, eight point five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and point five. 
then eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go. Three and eight. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, five point five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Go. Three and six. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five point five. One, two, three, four, five, and go. One and three. One, two, three. And that should finish them off. All right, just smash A or whatever. We're going to use our items, use the wings. Oops, hold right. Don't do that. Get ready for your final split. It's just going to occur right about there. And that is the Dragon Warrior tutorial. Anybody has any questions, I'll be pulling up my chat now. Just in case there might be a question or two. Let's see what we got. No, no questions so far. Yes, if your manipulation fails, you do not have any backups whatsoever. You have to do the execution through each of those instances perfectly. Hey, Cole. Thanks for the GG. As long as you're doing uh, uh, the first, second, third, and fifth split, absolutely everything is frame-based and it requires buffers and manipulations through the entire thing. If you mess up once, you have to start that particular split all over again. If you die at the Dragon Lord, you can reset and re restart that split, but you, you might want to just play through the first four splits again and then try to get through the fifth split on your first try for a better time. So it is a run ender if you do something wrong. All right, so once again, this uh, was quite long, but you can obviously utilize YouTube to advance to whatever spot in the game you want. Um, I'll try to create some timestamps so you can just click on those in the description. And if you have any questions, you can put them, uh, comment, on and on YouTube and once again I want to make the notes available I want to make this image available and this tutorial available so with that and the game and just practice uh, you should be able to uh, learn at least how to execute all these things and hopefully be able to throw a run together off uh, for yourself so um, is this why Dragon Warrior is super rare to see at speedrunning marathons yes in fact I think the only person who has done one at a speedrunning marathon was uh, Ness Cardinality at uh, Awesome Games Done Quick here uh, uh, 2018. And uh, this is actually his route. Uh, most of this is all his stuff that uh, he executed there. So if you were to watch his run there at uh, Awesome Games Done Quick, you'll see all of this stuff. All of this stuff, except for some of the, uh, the variations that occur with the encounters and stuff, but all of the walking paths are the same, except for split two, I got those from Ouija Wii. So, if there are no other questions, I hope anybody watching this finds it uh, incredibly interesting. Uh, thank you for watching.